Yo, 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 what is going on, everybody? Welcome back to the NDA Podcast. This is episode two. Today, I am joined by Kev and Wex, and we're going to be discussing the week two games that happened. We're going to touch on some of them and the results, and then we're also going to take a little preview as at the, to week three and take a look at those games as well. So without further ado, welcome, gentlemen. Hello, hello, hello. Hello. Greetings. <clears throat> All right, week, where uh, do you want to week- kick off? Where do you want to kick off? I want to kick yeah. off with the fact that week two was uh, was pretty rough for all of us. <laughs> yeah, week, week, two, week two was a rough one, fellas. You know, um, if at first you don't succeed, uh, try and try again. That's all I'm going to say. We um Oh, you know what we should start with? Uh, Wex finally played his week one games. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, Wex, how about, you, how about you talk about that one? I actually played my week one game after my week two game. So this is my second game in the in the league and um i mean it started off a bit rough because i um a long story short like my whole plan was or my main plan was to try and deal with crest as much as possible so i brought a um power herb uh, phantom force dragapult and um yeah that combined with um ice spinner chempo would have been enough to take it out in first turn so i was really excited to do that and then uh, zach just decided to not bring it at all but um yeah, overall, um, pretty fun. Um, game one didn't go to plan. I kind of messed up near the end. Um, I think it didn't kind of just ruin me for a little bit. Gig and Hammer did a bit of work. Um, Rodan was really the main problem um, on his team. So, um, yeah, I kind of obliterated me in game one. Um, I kind of got a bit messed up with the Intimidate shenanigans. But um, I played a lot better um, afterwards in, in, in game two after I lost game one to where I probably should have um, Earthquake the Lando to kill it, but um, yeah, I, I just misplayed, I think. But you know what? It's fine. Um, game 2 came around anyway, and I had a bit of reflection, had a bit of a pep talk um, from myself, and I remember a message came, and I just said, what the fuck am I doing? Basically. Um, but yeah, straight away killed the Rotom off. And just got it gone with uh, the Phantom Force. I was like, you know what, my problem is all gone now. And with the Rotom gone, Zach kind of seemed to be a lot more hindered than uh, the rest of the time. So, been able to like U-turn and Will-O-Wisp to land there straight away. Uh, it was good. And overall, I just felt a lot more comfortable like being able to sh- being able to freely like switch into Iron Treads a lot. Um, Earthworm being able to tank a lot of stuff, get a Shed Tail off, um, get Dragbolt back in for no reason basically, get, get Chimpo back in for nothing. Um, yeah, I just felt really more comfortable in game two. Um, once Rodan was gone, I kind of felt like a lot of, um, he couldn't really do much to the likes of Iron Treads or Earthworm or anything like that. He couldn't like just fire off an overheat and kill it all straight away. So yeah, I felt pretty, pretty nice uh, going into game three <coughs> and Tinker Thing came back out and there was a bit of a dogfight or a bit of a Mexican standoff at the, at the start, but I, overall I just decided straight away. Getting the um, getting the willow on the Tinkerton was probably my best for her. Make sure it didn't kill me with Gigan Hammer, but he went straight for it. And to be fair, if I didn't willow the Gigan Hammer, I wouldn't have had Dragapult in the back. But um, yeah, it went pretty well. Um, I was able to t- chip the Tinkerton down to about 25%. Um, Earthworm came out, was able to tank a load of fairy hits. Um, for our, our, I was able to tank Heavy Slam somehow with Champ out. I don't know how that happened. Um, but overall, I was just chipping away at him pretty nicely. Um, I, I I am liking my team a lot a lot more this week, or after this is my second game. I don't be going, but I am liking my team a lot more now. I'm getting more comfortable with the switching stuff, the earthquake stuff. Um, had a bit of had a bit of heat with the smackdown onto Rotom Heat. Um, being able to hit it then with a with an earthquake and stuff like that. Now I did get a bit lucky with the miss overheat, but I was I was terror ground. Um, but yeah, once smackdown came out, I was like. I am cooking. Yeah. <laughs> um, between that and Lando. Yeah. Um, I, uh, after like after two conse- like successive games with the team and like struggling like spoilers, like struggling with mouse ape, it looked like in this matchup you kinda like just figured out your yeah. team a little bit. It took you it took you like three games to figure yeah. it out, but once you figured but once it I out. Once I figured out like the um, earthworm kind of earth eater shenanigans, um, a lot of the switching stuff with Dragapult, uh, being able to keep Chempo alive as long as I could, and when I could just get rid of it, um, I just felt a lot better. Uh, I feel like, I don't know, um, 
have been able to switch around as freely as I did once I kind of got Landorus down to the final two where he couldn't just intimidate spam me. Felt pretty confident and um, yeah, being able to pick up the win in the end. Yeah. Um, so you you technically start at 1-0, even though you <laughs> even, the game. Even, even though that was um, um Yeah, managed to start off 1-0, so pretty happy with that. So yeah. And well, that will transition us into week two. And Justin, you are top of the schedule, my friend. You were oh. scummy. Yay. Um I won't go <laughs> too much into detail. Um, but I will say, Loaded Dice was probably the stupidest fucking thing I've ever done. Uh, really shouldn't have done that. If it was Wide Lens and I actually landed my Pop Bombs, like, fully, um, I, I win Game 3 very easily, right? Zoroark dies, um, so that's no problem. But, um, it put me in a tricky spot because I didn't, you know, land what I needed to land, and then I just got out positioned and didn't have enough damage to do what I needed to do, so... It's a bit unfortunate, a um, little bit of an oversight there, so just got to make sure I, you know, dot my I's and cross my T's when uh, making my teams. It's, I think that's like one of my biggest weaknesses, though, It's just the team building aspect. I think I mean, I, we prepped and like I didn't even notice that you were running. Like if I had known that you were running the wrong item, I would have um, said something. <laughs> but yeah, loaded dice does uh, not work with population bomb, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, yeah. Fun fact. Um, yeah, and then with wide lens, each hit is ninety nine percent accurate. So if you miss one, you just you know. It just oh, you just really, take it really on the chin. Yeah, you take it on the chin. <laughs> it's basically a hundred though. Um, but no, so just uh, unfortunate there. Um, if I do I that, I'm one and one. But I didn't, so I'm zero two. Um, but yeah, definitely. I th I think battling, like I feel like I put myself in pretty decent spots a lot. A lot of the time, it's just the the team building, especially early on in the season. It always gets me. It always gets me because I'm always trying to figure out my team. And I feel like I have a pretty good beat on what I want to do with the team and what feels good into certain matchups. But um, I don't play VGC outside of this. So, like, this is, for me, like, the first three or so weeks is, like, the, the dry run of, all right, this is kind of the meta. Let's see how this plays out. And then, uh, you know, figuring it out through, like, prep and, you know, practice battles and things like that. So, hopefully I can write the ship. Uh, the two-time champ difference is going to write the ship. So, I'm not concerned just yet. As long as I make it into playoffs is, is what really matters. Um, start, off, start off as strong as you want. If you don't win the actual <laughs> season, it doesn't really matter. So... We'll see what happens. But, you're on your, yeah. you're on your Lost. GG's to got me. Yeah. I would say just like to cap this off before we transition to the next match. Like, if you ran Pop Bomb, would you have been in a better position and might have won? Yes. I still think Gummy played pretty well. Like he, in like he was leading what I was leading in prep that I thought was doing pretty well. And mm -hmm. Like, I think he. Just, I just. I think Gummy played pretty well. Like he, game one, he got rid of your trick room setter. Like. Even though I, he probably like obviously it's game one. He doesn't know what you want to do there, but like he just doubled into a spot throw, and you were like screwed from there. So it was like like life orb Moltres did a ton of damage. Um, yeah, so, life orb Moltres, Jesus Christ. Yeah. So third so place, the gummy. He bounces back after our game week one. Um, <clears throat> next we have Quirts versus uh, Charisma. Uh, the Grand Sea Gra Gravel Rocks versus the Philly Flygons. Um, this was rough. I don't know if you guys watched this, but uh, Quartz got quite literally dogged on um, by a dash bun. Jesus. Um, Quartz got a little unlucky game one. Um, uh, Charisma's double lava plume cool. burn into non guts. Yeah, uh, uh, non guts. Hariyama was kind of rough. Um, was he? And then he also missed a he missed leaf storm into the dash bun, which we saw in the next game did like like ninety percent of the of its da like of its health. So just just quite unfortunate, but I think it was still like very rough next to dash bun. And then game two, Quartz went for a will o wisp into yeah. dash bun, which, as we all know, just gives it a plus two. You know what? It's it's definitely <laughs> so, it's definitely a, a move. It's one of the moves of all time if I've ever set, seen it. Right? Yeah. What's worse, clicking Willow into a dog that's immune to it, or running loaded dice pop bomb? 
you decide. Okay, okay, listen. <laughs> one was a team building mistake. The other one was just an oopsie doopsie brain fart. I feel like having a, a mental breakdown uh, mid game it, it is a worse thing to do than. No, I think under the pressure, that's uh, you know, it happens. I think just not knowing how the item works. People in the way blood said fucking oopsie doopsie. <laughs> But I'm never gonna get people on my side for that one, am I? Our uh, our first two week, our first two games of this week in Naranja were uh, uh, kind of rough, <laughs> team building slash just error based. Um, and Charisma took a decisive 2-0 win. And then we have <laughs> Kaylee versus your boy, the New Orleans Nine Tails versus Denver Numbers. Um, I watched this back quite recently. I didn't actually see it live when it happened, but it was actually a really, really close set. Um, let's see what I have uh, written down. Basically, your uh, your boy's item choice I think was really good. Uh, clear amulet Tauros and. Uh, what was it? Covert Cloak on Thundee was like really good into Kaylee's Icy Winds for speed control. Um, plus, Scary Face from the uh, Thunderous. Um, just like. Thundee and Amorous is so dangerous. Allow Thunderous to just control the tempo of the game, pretty much. Um, but like, this was like a really close back and forth set, honestly. Like, without going into crazy detail on how every turn went, I think this could have went either way. Um, like your boy even like was missing like some wild bolt storms. Like he didn't land everyone. Like Will does. Um, no one isn't salty. All right, all right. One's not we get it. Salty at all. No, no, I'm not at all. Um, I think the decisive moment in the in this game was uh your boy adjusting to the iron treads game three, but not bringing it the first two. Um, it was just really good in the back with. Uh, thunderous support and sweeping up the game. Uh, Kaylee had Terrid into Fire Flutter and like EQ spam yeah. was free. Oh yeah, close hit though. Fair play to both competitors. And we <laughs> Come. That that is what that is what you would take from that. Well, you literally no, but you emphasized it. That wasn't my fault. Not you said on purpose. Like, what am I supposed to take for that? Oh, pet. He meant pet. Tours? Oh, yeah, tours. Like a tour. You're going on tour. Like like uh, Taylor Swift, your favorite artist. Ew. I'm telling Ryder. That's what fine. <laughs> um, anyway, uh, we have two games that were not yeah, played. Yeah, skill yeah, issue. Uh, fuck yeah, you, so fuck uh, your division. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Narana is slacking a little bit, but to be fair, uh, we had someone that was pretty sick and another person who was competing in Worlds, so honestly, fair honestly, enough. Honestly, actual honestly. skill issue for us, <laughs> so. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. Give me there next year, see you in Hawaii. Um, yeah, so that leaves the our game of the week, which sadly I couldn't uh, live up to the hype. Um, me versus Will. Um, so basically, in prep, right, against Ryder, I didn't lose a single game. I, I absolutely cooked. I didn't think Will had a chance in the world. And then game turn one of game one, I literally have Terrifier uh, Iron Hands. And I was like, you know what? He he led Torn and Bramble Gas. What do I need to lead? What, I, don't, I don't think I need Terrier. I, like, I literally clicked it, and I was like, wait, do I need a Terry here? No, nah, I'll save it in case. Turn one, tail, Tailwind, plus one Bramble Gas, Terra Fairy, Terra Blast. Picks off Iron Hands. And like from there, I just like... I even had a chance, but I think I got like burned on a Heat Wave, or I don't know. Or I just didn't stall Tailwind effectively. I don't remember exactly what happened, but... Like, just the momentum, like, Iron Hands was so good in this matchup, and I just had to Terra, and I was in, like, a really good spot. Um, it just feels, feels quite bad. Um, like, Pinkurchin setting up my Paradox Pokemon was just so good. 
Um, I was able to run Sash Valiant for longevity and still get like an attack buff. Um, and like, it was like, it was just able to pick, like as long as, uh, Gal actually, yeah, I was gonna say as long as Galade didn't have wide guard, but I wasn't running Dazzling Gleam, I'm running physical, I'm trolling. Um, I realized once he terra fairied, I didn't really have much for like offense into fairy. Um, that's like, I feel like that's going to be, a, I got to like make sure throughout the season, <laughs> even if my opponent is like me and doesn't have, um, like a lot of, like he has Tinker Tongue, but like, I just prep for like ground moves and stuff. So it was like, I didn't need anything to just hit fairy types. And once something terra fairies, it's just like, it's really rough. Um, and Will ends up taking, it was cl I brought it back close, but Will takes game one. And then game two, I'm like, okay, like, I'm just going to Terra Fairy on, I have a Terra Fire on turn one. So that won't happen again. Um, and he, I think he changed up the lead. Yeah, he went uh, Chi Yu Jolteon and I Terra Fired here. Especially, like, I, I brought Terrifier in the first place because of Chiyu. Like, I just wanted to resist. Like, I know, like, Will's not going to click a dark move into Iron Hands. Like, like Specs looks really good against me with Chiyu. Like, he's just going to click, like, an Overheat or something. With, like, I was AV, like, Max Badef Iron Hands. Like, I'm in a good spot here. And he switched out Chiyu on turn one. Goes Bramble. Um and protects the Jolteon who which I targeted with a uh, drain punch I thought that was safer in case like the uh, Chiyu Terra Ghost or something which is like a big Terra type for uh, Chiyu um, just like I didn't want to click drain punch and do the ghost and he kind of just like switched around a bit and stalled me out um, the Terra Fairy another Terra Fairy I feel like Justin, I feel like I'm in your situation where everyone just kind of run Terra Fairy against me all Dude, season. Dude, last, last season was disgusting. The amount of Terra Fairy... Every single week, I think I saw Terra Fairy. I was like, Dude, you don't even get a Fairy move outside of Terra Blast, and I'm getting absolutely cooked. That's why Hydreigon it just... Ugh. Having, yeah. having that Mon just, I felt like, dampened anything I wanted to do. I mean, still made semis, but still. Yeah, and it's like, I couldn't even, like, bring... So, like... <laughs> My first three picks are Iron Hands, Ting Lu, and Valiant, who are all weak to Fairy. And like, I have my Steel type in Orthworm, but Orthworm has really bad spit out, so it's like, I can't bring it in front of a Chiyu. Like, it just felt so bad. I still think my team is really solid and I can play around it, like, but it's just, uh, so, so it's rough. Good. Um, and then once I had already Terrored Fire, he, um, like, he was able to just click other buttons into, um, Iron Hands that like just did enough damage with Specs to you, so just felt a little bad. Um, and it, I think it just it came down to a burn on my Valiant at one point. Um, like I I lived the, with my Sash from the Heat Wave, and um, if I had the if I didn't get burned, I think I could have lived a spread Heat Wave with the uh, Pinkerchin or just like got a, a little more damage onto. Chi you at the end there, but once again, Will Will has bested me. I feel like I just can't beat Will. Yeah, that's I don't know what it Imagine is. not being able to beat one so. person in the entire league. Like that's that's impossible. <laughs> that's yeah. that's wild to me. I mean, imagine not being able to be like, especially to be honest, not to like boast my own, you know. But I did beat Will, you know, with my Dialga I've, back. What was that season? Uh, season I've also three, beat season Will four times. Oh man. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, Will's I was, an easy, uh, easy was, beat, by the way. I was looking at it with Ryder, I don't want to talk the, right. <laughs> a Hall of Fame doc, and uh, I think I'm now three and four or three and five against Will. But I just feel like my results recently are just, like I feel like I won early against Will. And now he's like just played really well against me in the past. Um, well, it's not hard to beat you, so. That's all. Well, you have a negative record against me. Wax has never. Wait, do I? Yeah, don't you want to do. Talk about it, all right. <laughs> I think I'm more yeah. more. Um, Wait, Wax, no. have you not beaten Kevin this entire time? He's. Yeah, I forget if it was seven <laughs> or nine, but he's he's oh, it's 
And he's always Jesus. Bro, you're the Browns. This is off. <laughs> Shambolic like, scenes. Most of, it, it, it just sort of happened. Like a lot of our matches were in like the last week of um, like regular season when I was like first or second and I couldn't go anywhere. So I just didn't prep too hard. So, I oh yeah, yeah, of, of course, of course. I mean, you just no, give the it, you're that, throwing the, the dog the a bone. I, won, I, I lost to Kevin like last week. I mean, all I'm saying. It'd be like yeah. that. Yeah. Uh, we played yeah, once we in season know one before like, we even really <laughs> knew each other. When we were both yeah. uh, both sub-coaches. And then the next season, I don't remember if we played in the regular season, but Is we played like a crazy uh, yeah. third place match. Match, match. Yeah. That was a wild... Yeah, we've had a lot. Wild... The we've bronze on the playoffs where I like, yeah. came from... Like, I was bottom of the league like coming into... like that was, I think that was season three. That was no, the last like, week of the season. Run zone game where um, I like that was playoffs. Yeah. Oh, was that playoffs? That, that was quarterfinals because I brought um, what was, yeah. was it Iron Defense Skill Swap Run zone or some shit like that? Yeah, it was. It was like weakness. It was, it was heat. Too, it was fucking shit. heat. <laughs> All right, we may or may not be yeah, steering sure. off course here, but amen, amen. <laughs> it happens. It's um. All right. Well. We can transition to your match that you're going into, Justin. The first match of the Uva Week Two, uh, the Los yeah. Angeles Gravelers, the Prime going. City Ride-Ons. Oh yeah! So with this match, uh, before we even started the podcast, me and uh, me and Wex were like, "Hmm, I wonder how on turn seven this Dragonite that's Terra Normal was able to switch out in front of a Shadow Tag Gothitelle." And I was thinking to myself, and I told Wex, I was like, there's no way he brought the item that allows you to switch out in front of Shadow Tag. There's no way. And then Kevin's like, he joins in, he's just like, oh yeah, he put it in the chat. He put it on Dragonite. So he had on, was it Shed Shell? I think it's Shed Shell, yeah. Yeah, so he had Shed Shell on Dragonite. So, I mean, that was really smart. And then having U-turn and Volt switches and just any kind of pivot, um, highly yeah. focusing on not getting Parish Trapped. Um, that was the difference maker in this game. Um, I think just the way he played around with the, especially with the Jolteon. The Jolteon put in a lot of work. Um, almost one shotting Gengar just off rip in game one. Um, Blizzard lands on for Greninja were kind of nutty, just raw Blizzard. Um, that's the that's the Griffin difference. That is the the Griff diff. You know what I mean? The Griff diff. <laughs> the I Griff like diff. Um, but yeah, Terra Normal Dragonite, I mean, who would have saw that coming? Really. All right, we all did. <laughs> but like, it's it's so good. It's so good. Um, it does so much damage with the extreme speed. Um, just overall, really well worked around positioning-wise um, by Griff to avoid Paris Trap and avoid being, um, you know, stuck on the field with certain mons. So um, really, really impressed by the showing. Um, especially in game two, putting in the Espoth. I mean, okay, so, um, so Bug was trying to switch it up with Ice Q. I think that was kind of a mistake. I think Gothitelle would have been a little bit better here, but, um, switching up with, uh, Espothra from Griffin's point of view, like, that was pretty cool. Um, no bias whatsoever, I promise. Um, but I mean, Luma crashes and if, you, if all you're that. firm Bug and you see all this pivot, and you see Dragonite switch out with shed, uh, the Shed Shell. Do you even bother bringing the Gothitelle? Like, I don't know. I mean, at call. that point, yeah. If everyone's just switching out, then like, why do you bring it? But, I mean, you get Fake Out. I mean, he he was. I think he was running Psychic on it as well. Yeah, Psychic, Protect, just to stall out. So, I mean, yeah, but I still feel like it would have done a little bit better than Ice Q. I mean, Ice Q. What was it gonna do outside of like a Ice Shard into Dragonite that was you know, roosting for like multi-scale or like freeze dry, you know, I think that's what he actually uses freeze dry. Mm. Um, but still, um, yeah, no, good, good game by Griff. Um, I think we that puts in, the, puts that say, 2-0, right? Yeah. I was going to say, we'll ignore the fact that Griffin didn't <laughs> know ghost types could switch out in front of shit. I was going to bring it up. Yeah, I mentioned it I wasn't going to do week. it. <laughs> Somehow he didn't. Yeah. 
need it. That was funny. Though. I mean, it didn't need it. He he, he just knew he didn't. He just knew he didn't need flutter. That's all. That's all. Yeah, fair enough. Fair enough. All right, Max. Um, what's next? What happened next is with me in my first game against um against Jal. I mean, I, I was kind of getting grips with my team. I didn't really play that well. Um, I overlooked me Escarada completely. Um, yeah, just it, it pretty much just shot on me. And then in the end, like I mean, um, Terra Steel wave crash um, into me just ruined me game one from Tauros, and then game two, uh, mouse it in the back, just destroyed me. Uh, not really much else to say except yeah, I just didn't play didn't play that great. Um, <laughs> I don't know if you just heard people shouting at the door. Um, there there is a yeah, there's a FIFA Cup final going on right now. And um, I think Jude Bellingham got injured during the first couple minutes, um, so not great. But uh, <laughs> um, overall, I was still, still getting the grips of this team. Um, didn't play particularly well with it, but you know, played better in my second game, so that's all I'm really happy about. Um, just kind of want to move things along a bit more. But don't want to dwell on I me. Mean, well played the jam though. It's pretty played pretty well, pretty clean. Um, the mouse up in the back, even though I had the lead for it, um, mouse up destroyed me in the back because I. Like my dragon bolt was gone, and um, yeah, fair play. That's all I can really say about that one. Uh, moving on, um, Germ. I uh, absolutely yeah, against Palio Bulls and Pinky. Um, Germ really loves Trailblaze for some reason this season, and he's just kicking off with it on every money has. Um, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I wasn't expecting. I wasn't uh, expecting this. That was not on my Trailblaze toxicity. It, but... it did cook. <laughs> one anyway. It, it cooked. Did. Um, but once that Trailblazer was gone and um, Pinky knew about it, uh, Shifu was just kind of able to roll in games two and three. Um, it's it's looking kind of scary, lads. I won't lie. Shifu, both forms in both leagues are playing pretty insane. Dude, yeah, Er uh, Shifu is uh. Who, who, who was it? Don't get me started. <laughs> it uh, <laughs> not me. I like. I really thought like uh, Torn was gonna be the first overall pick, but I mean, rightfully so. Urshifu went one and then two. Yeah, and then, like, I mean, it did take out Torn in the first so turn of. Um, <laughs> I think it was the second game. So, I mean, that just shows. His... Dude, Dude with, just didn't prepare. I was like watching like with fake out pressure. Like, it's ins it's insane. Yeah. Like, you can't protect to stop the fake out because. Like I mean, you can, but then like Urshifu just hits you through. Yeah, the yeah. Like, it's so insane. Like, I was like, yeah, I didn't even think about how busted it was gonna be with like fake out pressure. Like, oh, was, you oh. wanna? It's like, oh, you wanna you wanna mitigate his attack by intimidating or by you know using a charm or whatever. Nah, you can't. I mean, it's what dark type sometimes something what the wicked blow one is. Um, but like the surging strikes one, it's like all right, cool, but you're critting, so it doesn't matter. Like, it helps for it, like. It really doesn't matter. It helps for every yeah. other move it does, but like, why click any other move? <laughs> unlike unless they like really resist or are immune, it's just like it's insane. I was like watching that game three back, and I was like, I couldn't believe how busted the Raichu. Like even and the Raichu, like it's such a good pair partner because yeah, I mean, you can't click Cleaver in the back kind of just swept as well like, with, so with the micro pressure, so not much you could do there. Um, but yeah. That was pretty much that game in a nutshell. It was just surging strikes is stupidly overpowered, and I'm pretty sure. Um, I don't know if it ended the week um, near the top, but it was definitely. Um, it made surging yeah, surging strikes is now fourth on the kid leaderboard right now, which is busted. Only one man can learn to move, and it has 11 kills with it. Grow up. Yeah. Um, probably. Wasn't, did we have something like that yeah. last season too? I feel, like we did, I feel like we did have something like that, but I can't remember what it was. I can't remember what it was exactly, but... Yeah. I'll, uh, yeah, I'll um, Speaking of, uh, Shifu I again, we see. had, um... Shifu doing Shifu uh, things again in Ryder against, um, Alex and... Ryder winning 2-1 against the Az Azalea Amphroses. Um, yeah. For game 1 was pretty much a Shifu just killing everything. Um... Yeah, pretty much um, that's about it. Um, one thing in game in, in the next game, uh, Ryder just kind of decided, no, no, Terra Ground, Spectre, and Chiyu just kind of went off. Terra Ground, Spectre was insane. 
um, killed Glimor twice on turn on turn one. I'm assuming I'm assuming someone's just scored. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm assuming. Okay. Uh, Arcane, indeed. Um, but yeah, Terror Ground Spectre kind of went off at the start. Um, and yeah, and, and then I couldn't didn't believe expect to, to Alex the same button. Let him do it a second um, time in game three. I mean, it was a bit of a. There's not much you could have done, but I don't know. I feel like. I just, I just feel. I feel like Spectre was too too good in this, and then Chiu just coming in and. Chiu is looking also insane. Um, I think Ryder, special as a specially attacking team, Ryder's team looks pretty insane. R Spectre with seven kills at the moment, looking decent. Um, yeah. <clears throat> I mean, I feel like Chiu. I should have looked into Chiu more for draft, as I've been like prepping Ryder and prepping against Chiu. It just yeah, seems over like over he is low key kind whatever. of versatile and it just does like, so much damage. When it's when I was high special attack stuff like that, and as well as that it lowers everyone else's special defense. Overheat's killing so much, especially if it's stab. Um don't get me started if it turns like into Terra, but mostly it just goes Terra Ghost. But overall it's it's busted. Um Especially with someone like Ryder controlling it, I've, I kind of feel scared because yeah. we saw what he did with Sylveon back in the day. I don't want to see a repeat. Um, yeah, never again. Yeah. Oh, um, that was scary. And Celestina. God, why did we let him do this thing to us? Why? Did, when? When do we learn at oh, this stage? Oh God. Like? Um. Yeah. Anyway, Ryder, well played. Yeah, it's very much copium in this league. You don't learn; you just cope. Uh, the, uh, oh, the signature I remember moves that what popped up last season where, uh, to be honest, most of it was kind of normal. I remember what other moves was, 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 uh, made him to like, the top couple by signature. one one. It was fucking yeah. vicious round. Yeah. The go, the go. Well, that, yeah, way oh, back I loved point, it. Yeah, vicious round popped off. Yeah, that, that thing's scary. <laughs> I uh, oh, I haven't seen any. I, uh, I, I, I don't so think we're great. getting the fossils back in DLC. Oh, unfortunately. Give me back my glory Thank days. Thank God. But um, yeah, going into <laughs> the last game before we move on to game of the week. Um, we have Zach but... against the Jersey City Jump Plus, so Straw Hat against um, what are we called? Uh, geez, I'm forgetting his name. <laughs> <laughs> I I nearly called him um, Koopa. Koopa. <laughs> like, we just talked about him. That's wrong. Um. Koopa and I mean, don't get me wrong. Don't disrespect the two old Jersey me, City I mean, Jump Plus. All right, new, too many new people these days. Uh, but yeah, um, game one. <laughs> game one was a bit weird. There was lots of misses. Who There's a are rocks you like people? Miss. Um, and then everything just kept missing. I don't know if everyone was running by Pred or something, but um, Zach ended up getting the win in a very close battle. But um. I really don't know what's going on outside. And I think I think that's yeah. it, like Sean. No one's doing a goofy scream. Um, surely they they must be winning at this stage. Either that or it's very close. That's um. Anyway, uh, back to this. <laughs> um. Yeah, lots of stuff in game one. Zach ended up winning that one, but the highlight of the, of the show was the mold breaker ta stomping tantrum onto the Rotom hit, Rotom heat, ignoring levitate. That was. Yeah, let it happen yeah. twice. I kind of just let that happen twice. Kind of like Alex, he kind of just yeah, let game, that game happen two. twice. And I was just like... like, the mm. first time? The first time? Fair enough. Like, no one really saw that coming. Yeah, you have third, to, like, have like, your eyes looking at that as well. And then, I mean, Terra Ice Rotom like Heat was pretty nice as well. I think you just gotta have an answer for that. Um... Yeah, poor Zach. Uh, yeah, his first game as a coach this season forgot to change his terror types. <laughs> so, yeah. oh, he had terror ground. Uh, I, mean, uh, I kind of felt like Zach. Still, like, like I looked at the guys, teams yeah. I brought. Like, cause he played the two games pretty close against each other, and he brought the same six, but just slightly changed some of the sets. I, I noticed. Um, but yeah, that I means fair enough. Um, but yeah, Zach's Zach has been playing well, but he just hasn't gotten the wins. To be honest, like I, I wouldn't be surprised yeah, if Zach I mean, made a run. Um, coming up because he clearly has the ability. Like he, I took a play from Bo. 
yeah took a point took a point from both and he was messaging me. he was messaging me about this week that he's already he's already cooking up something um, yeah hey. move on to the game of the week like now uh, to come, Chicago we'll Slaloons we'll against uh, Cashel Boy and the uh, Salon Stuffle um, yeah coming into the week basically um, Salon Stuffle were 1-0 and and Mao had a very close loss so I decided it'd be game of the week be pretty tight and um yeah, we saw a nice cheeky little Salazzle giraffe lead. Will would love to see that um, into the Taro, uh, Taro into the Terra Kilowattril and the Iron Valiant. Um, and we, uh, I, I'm just deciding I am now a Mao hater because all we see the, the, these days is um, Ally Switch because yeah, yeah. I think the the NDA is very anti male these days. No, no one, no one supports this uh, this nonsense. That is, I, I, I support it. I no, support all, it. All we're seeing right now is we don't support, you. Okay, we don't support um, now and just there's a nice little right. tech with overheat, um, Salazzle, don't worry, and the jet pack as well. Um, it's pretty good. Obviously, getting the switch out, just basically nullifying the the special tech drop. Um, Things are just eating everything. Slaz will end up bopping things. And the tech in the back of Inteleon, Terra Flying, Air Cutter. Um, I really like that. And I, I don't think I, I have. It makes a lot of I feel like I never saw that before, but it makes so much sense. Has, it makes so much sense on Inteleon. The last <laughs> and I don't know why we've never seen that before. Maybe because yeah. we're all just too small brained. I don't know. Like, I know Inteleon like, wasn't like a thing really in sword and shield but like surely like that like could have been used a little bit like i don't know it just like if you want to run snipe shot and like crit like critting moves like air cutter spread flying damage just makes so much sense <laughs> like like uh, i can't believe we had never like mouse and bringing this to light finally in the nda like i had just never seen that before Sure, yeah, um, one second. Hello? <laughs> okay, I'll keep talking, I guess. Um, I don't even know. We were just like, I didn't think Mao was going to like have a great mashup into Dozo. And uh, he clearly, uh, Cashel Boy clearly prepped hard for Trick Room. And I think these Trick Room teams are like, doing really well right now when they're like not setting up trick room because on turn one of these games um on turn one of these games these coaches that don't have like the best trick room matchups are just like they're just running um like in prison and stuff um mm -hmm. it's just like in that one turn where they're clicking in prison they're not they're not being, attacking yeah they're not being like active in the battle if you're not setting up trick room so it's just like yeah. really beneficial for mal and yeah and like we've seen the flip side of that too right remember when will he used his glade he had trick room in prison but then he was also able to get a lot of kills because the p opponent he was facing that week he was able to uh mitigate like to refuse the trick room being set up because he used in prison um so like that sort of thing um on the flip side of what you're saying also can happen but if you are able to get the momentum and you are able to you know put yourself in a position where you click in prison or you click trick room and it's not punished well then it's gonna be really really beneficial for you because you're not wasting a turn yeah I, there's definitely yeah like you said there's definitely instances where you don't get punished for being passive but like, I, I just feel like in this like instance like without dozo in the back like like I just um okay what were you guys talking about for the last five minutes um, um, lost the my got it kind of <laughs> um, <laughs> and uh, we're just talk we're talking about how uh yeah. like being passive on turn one with imprison iron valiant is just like when mal doesn't go to set up trick room like it just the momentum like just really swings a little bit and um, Do you go into game two at all? It's just, it's just tough to come back from if like oh, okay. played correctly by the Moving other person. Game two. I think. Um, yeah. yeah. Overall, <laughs> no, we were just getting into it. Game two, that's it. Yep. That's it. Yep, yep. Game two, uh, yep. That's uh, yep. <laughs> that covers it, ladies and gentlemen. Bit of an ally switch. Nice ally switch as well from Giraffe, of course. 
and craft things. Uh, we, do you know how we had the Alley Switch counter back in the day? I think we need to bring it back for Mao and just Mao. Because. Yeah, Mao asked about. He asked about it. It shouldn't it, be a like, problem. Well, it no, is. it's gone because the Alley Switch got nerfed and we didn't think we had a bunch of rats in the end. So click it. Yeah, I mean, listen. Doing the allies switch counter thing in the first place was kind of annoying. It's just more work. You um, know? But yeah, <laughs> I don't want to um, do it. we saw the, the tech once again allies with the terrifying air cutter, and um, it crit the dozer that took out half its health, pretty big, um, there. And yeah, now it did die, died straight to straight away to a wave crash. But eventually, thanks to the, the crit on the air cutter, um, it crash ended up killing dozo, and not really else came from it. There's a couple, there's a lot of misses as well um, afterwards, but I think. There was a muddy water from Tatsugiri, and then there's a couple dazzling gleam misses from Frigoraf. It's a bit messy, but um, yeah, overall, I think that um, once once Straff got the D gleam off to win, um, messy. Kind of messy, messy. Once Straff got the uh, D gleam off Demons, to win, messy. Um, I'm kind of messy. Yeah, I'm pretty, sorry. Pretty set in stone that Mao is ready to take on the league. I think this year. Um, fair, mm. fair enough for Mal. I don't even know if he had it or he just like went for damage, but like, Antelion yeah. does get haze and Men's just like goes uh, out without it. Mal plays really like, well. Okay, um, you know what, Mal? I am fair. genuinely scared of his team yeah. now. Um, won't lie, but um, <laughs> hey ho, go on. I think Castle Boy mm. kind of threw. I think he still could have won. Um, Cash he didn't target the Ferrigarath uh, when it was like 42% and instead clicked Heavy Slam in the Glass Year, who is like the same weight, if not heavier, than Dondozo. So it's like, it just kind of felt like a really poor like decision endgame wise and kind of let Mal sneak back into it. Um, Ferrigarath was still doing like pretty decent damage with the uh, Hyper Voice. So just like that one turn, I think it could have went to game three. But overall, but, like I, I like uh, my team that we didn't see enough you know, of um, the glass these things really um, this week with mm -hmm. Thomas Snow or anything like that. But um, that like now it's so much to run on this team with Salazzle and the big spam from Ice. Like I team is actually scary. Like we saw, like he only lost game one or week one because of a nice little crash miss. Miss. So like I feel, I feel like Mouse is gonna be really good this season. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I'm excited for Mal. He had, Mal. Mal had a rough season last year, and I hope he bounces back and does really well in this division. I like, I like, I love his team. I was uh, prepping a little bit with but, Robert um, for it, and yeah. I'm using it. I think that covers good. all of our games for so, this week. Excited to see how Mal does. Um. What we, what we, what we got looking into next week? Um, what we got? So I do want to touch on one thing specifically. I'll go for it. So we've had some transactions happen this week, and in both divisions, Iron Jugglist was picked up. So I'm interested. I'm interested to see just how they're used yeah. and if they're used That's effectively. Perfect. So, um, those two going to no. what Kaylee and uh, AZA. I'm blanking. Uh, Alex. Yeah. So, you. so we'll see if those two coaches can properly utilize those mons if they even come at all. Um, I know Kaylee also brought or. Uh, Used up all the transaction, got Fittizen instead of Rotom, Rotom Frost instead of a Palisand, and then a Bomb of Snow instead of Flamigo. So, uh, also dropping the Greninja in favor of the Iron Jugulus. Uh, I think looking at that, I mean, that's going to be interesting to see how they use this new team to their advantage, because um, it is effective for this upcoming week. So, um, it's going to be an interesting watch. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it gets me specifically, um, week, so. which is why I may have a vested interest in it, but uh, also. Will is punching the air right now. Oh. Yeah, Pot. and then Sandy Shocks is available in the Uva division, so if people want to pick that up immediately. Oh, oh, he was so mad. He he made a comment about it. He was just like, I 
forget what he said. But he's, he's like, all right, he's like, all right, Justin, your turn. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, something like that. Yeah. <laughs> your turn. You drop it now. Um, nah, I'm good. I think I'm gonna hold on to it for a little while. <laughs> um, last thing to oh, cover yeah. before we move into the next week. Uh, it would appear that we have a new kill leader. Uh, Jerem's Bax Caliber has overtaken Gallade. I mean, and obviously, it is, it I is guess like, like this is just like the theme of draft the league. Uh, Terrible is waves. first in kills, right? Unless the Terrible so is gonna win the last. It just year, makes sense when it's so versatile. I was thinking. I feel like I might contribute to a lot of the Earthquake kills this season. Um, it is like what, right behind Earthquake? So like it's so close. Hopefully, Earthquake can win it. Yeah. Earthquake, um, typically being this the best move of um, NBA history. Um, how we know that? Yep. You'll all probably realize in coming weeks, I'd imagine, in days probably. It might be something might be reaching your feeds eventually. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So, and oh. one more thing I do want to touch on, and I just want to make it very, very clear to everybody on a more serious note. Please do not forfeit your games. Oh my God. I don't care if you're going to be losing 120%. I don't care if it's a, a 4-0 loss, a 4-1 loss. Everything's all said and done. For us to measure the kills properly and not have any issues, it's absolutely crucial that you do not forfeit your games. Um, because if you do, not only are you forfeiting the potential kills that you could get towards your KD ratio, which is one of the factors that go into uh, if you're tied with somebody in points um, and then like set uh, ratio, which by the way, you play mm -hmm. the same amount of game. So there's a good amount, there's a good chance that you can run into the same set ratio. We've had this happen uh, quite a few times in the past where somebody <laughs> will make it based off of the KO ratio. I think last season uh, Justin was did. an example uh, <laughs> because I was able to get him because of my KO ratio. Now imagine if I was losing a, a set really hard and I was just like, fuck it, I'm going to forfeit. Well, then I, maybe I don't make semis. Maybe I don't give myself a chance to, you know, make it into playoffs. So please, for your own sake and for ad administration's sake, just don't forfeit your games. Play it out uh, through and through. Even if you can't get a kill and it Go doesn't ahead. matter and you know what's going to happen, just let it happen. Just go fast right for typing slash ff or whatever it is forfeit and, and, and then doing that like no um and at this Man. point this is the, the third time we've we brought this up so hopefully after this we don't see anything else but if we do continue to see more forfeits there will be more internal discussion on what we will be doing to to punish those that that do that whether yeah. it's uh revoking some points or just you know other other measures those are yet to be decided on but we really just don't want to have to get to that point so please just finish out your games and no more issues um i think historically people forfeit in those moments to like you know not reveal information or such but like i feel like you like, could just click the same move that yeah, you've already that's shown what I'm saying. like anything that you've already shown you just spam it or like yeah. something there no you're, like if you're an urshifu and you haven't clicked the button yet and you already lost like they know you're going to carry a wicked blow or a charging strike. So just click the button that isn't giving any information away. Like, Yeah. Um, and I understand there are some coaches that are used to like VGC leagues where you can forfeit and it's fine. Or like they're used to playing, you know, at tournaments or online. And if you're already losing, you just forfeit because you're in a bad spot. You don't want to finish it out because you already feel like you're going to lose. Um, I understand that, but we track everything oh, we, like literally we track everything here so we uh we do think it's important yeah Clear your search history on um, <laughs> um so it, it's important for us anyway um I might have next to week the same we didn't cover it um <clears throat> yeah, game of the week for uva is jersey jump Plus against jackson moltres jam against uh, Koopa nearly, nearly said, nearly said Fernbug again. I don't know why. Um, but you know them. Fernbug. <laughs> what a name, by the way. Maybe it's biased because I like I was kind the of large learn, part in recruiting. Yeah, I was recruiting a lot of these people. Um, anyway. But like, y'all gotta get your shit. Together. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> oh, sorry, I'm not Irish. I don't know. Um, anyway. Um, game of the week. I, I'm pretty um, sure I said it right every against, time I said um, this podcast. Jump against so. Koopa. We have this. L. Actually, we, L we see both of the Rillaboom, Heatra, and Rotom wash um, cores in both game of the weeks this week. Spoiler. But, um, I only just noticed that and they're looking at it. 
It's almost like it's it's almost like it's it's, it's almost like bulky. Ah, uh, but anyway, so we, we, we see the big that big really core coming up against Mezzo and uh, they're like yeah, just maybe. around it, all the boys. I did see Belly Bulb this year, which um kinda wanna see after last year. With with no it um yeah, give it to him for the culture. Um, yeah, I wonder if we're going to see more, any more Anakuno shenanigans with um, Bright Powder and Snowbird and stuff like that. <laughs> and maybe with Heatran, probably not. But um, yeah, it's kind of hard to it's kind of hard to predict this one. Um, I'm not going to give any more predictions because we finished predictions a couple of seasons ago, and Just... yeah. Yeah, I think uh, I think Malsape's really good into balance, so uh, we'll see how Jam plays around. Maybe screens. I think screens can hit yeah. it a little bit. Um, and this team does have a Klefki, so I, I do I mean, think Jam has like a pretty good matchup. Um, this we'll is pretty good. Um, um, like once he's gone with Annihilator, I'm, I'm balance, wondering. See, I, think I wonder like what, what, um, what Terra type is going to go with because top three kind of deal with like Annihilator. Like, in my opinion, probably nearly always runs either water or um or fire. But um I mean Rilla Boom he trying to run watch gonna deal with that them them two pretty well. So I'm excited to see what he runs to be honest. Um not very sure but yeah that's pretty much a quick little recap of Uva. Kev do you wanna go over your game of the weekend? Mm -hmm. Nah nah Um, yeah, our game of the week is our boy Swamp returning from Worlds, um, who had a, was just a really strong coach, versus the 2-0 and o, uh, Philly Flagons, like again, we said, the Rillaboom, Heatran, Vernon, Washcore. Um, I think this is just a high caliber, like, coach match, and, you know, Charisma, Charisma's 2-0, and o, uh, Swamp's currently 1-0 and o coming into this, because, uh, um, you know, he didn't play yeah, realize match. Okay, this is a bit so of a I just, like, I have high hopes for this match. I think they're going to show, like, a good level of skill here. Um, uh, it, there. Yeah, I'm t I was it, trying to talk about it like it hadn't know. happened yet. But I'm not sure. um, <laughs> I was, I was just confused. Like, I want to be like, hey, guys, we already saw this one. Yeah, we <laughs> it's, do already. Uh, it's going to piss somebody off. We already know uh, what happened, so there's not that much use in well, I, 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 I was it gonna try to but now you know now there's no point um yeah uh two good coaches uh it was or will be a good no match. way yeah there's um, gonna be pokemon this roughly yeah expect pokemon to click buttons that. yeah Fraud. i'm good i'm good at that i i can do that i can't um but yeah that Get uh better true i believe that is all we have to cover um other than i think that's like even though it already happened and we're not gonna go into much detail i think that's just like a really good worthy match of game of the week um mm -hmm. and we'll fill y'all in on how it went I think the next so. episode absolutely i need to go to bed all right does that do you think that wraps about up i think we covered everything <laughs> all right well <laughs> I need to take a nap as well before my, my shifty poo. So, with that being said, thank you guys so much for tuning in for the NDA podcast. Uh, thank you, Kevin Wex, for joining me this fine evening. And we will see you guys next week when we will cover week three matches, including the games of the weeks uh, mentioned today, as well as taking a little preview on the week four matches that are about to come up. So, uh, yeah, take care, guys, and we'll see you next week. Peace. Thank you.